Twas the night of Christmas, and all through the newsplex, the station was quiet, the scripts full of text. The stockings were hung by the news set with care in hopes that the anchors would all soon be there. But then, good old Charlie sat down with his strings to take us on travels full of Christmassy things. We'll see the magic of Christmas all through kids' eyes, teaching us lessons to believe, hey, that's wise. Then we'll travel to Georgetown, a tradition year after year, singing on the circle, ringing in Christmas cheer. But what's Christmas without presents under the tree? We'll show you how Bless Our Children makes it possible for you and me. Then we'll soar to the sky as quick as a flash and see all the lights that guide us to Santa's stash. And by the end of the night, we'll gather together for a song that's sung through the season forever. This is our Christmas story. Here at WBOC, a Del Marvelous Christmas as true as true can be. Hi there, my name's Charles Paparella, and Merry Christmas. The next half hour we're gonna bring you a newscast that doesn't have any news in it, just some tidings of comfort and joy. Now, you've probably seen my new friend Jennifer Marin here on the air at WBOC. <laughs> she's an excellent reporter, but she's also in charge of our Telemundo. Can you tell us about that? Of course. So Telemundo is the leading Spanish language network in America, and we're going to have it now here on Del Marva. So we're so excited about that. Okay. Our reporters have gathered stories of the season from around Del Marva, and you have the very first story. What's this about, Jen? Yep, Charlie. So. One of the traditions here at WBOC is our Bless Our Children campaign. And for parents, there's no better feeling than seeing a smile on your child's face come Christmas morning. But for parents who struggle financially, that can be really difficult. I met up with a family who struggled a lot this past year and their pastor who says without WBOC's Bless Our Children campaign, he could not help these folks out and so many others who struggled during the holiday season. I can't go on the fast. It's been a year since three-year-old Edmira was surprised with a very special Christmas gift, her first tricycle. A gift Edmira's grandmother says has put a smile on her face, despite their recent hardships. June the 5th, we had a, just a little smoke fire. And in the complex, that's automatic termination of your lease, non-renewal. And um, they put us out on the spot. The Red Cross stepped in and gave them money to stay in a motel. But the money ran out and the family found themselves living in a camper. Which the camper uh, held eight people, but it was me, six kids, my daughter and my youngest son. Um, no running water or anything. Times were tough, but they had faith. And their pastor, Daniel Appleby, a pastor who's been working with the Bless Our Children campaign for years, helping families such as Admira's. When we bought her the little tricycle last year, she became our poster child. And I know she loves it. She rode it all over the place. <laughs> My son and his kids roam. Six months later, the family is out of the camper and into this home. And as Maria watches her grandkids enjoy their gifts, she has a message for the folks at home. I appreciate each and every one of y'all, and I hope God bless you from your days in the days out. Over at Pastor Appleby's home, gift wrapping and list checking is a norm on Christmas, but the road to Christmas isn't easy. When we get help from Bless Our Children, um, it allows us to do what's in our heart to do, but not in our pocketbook to do, <laughs> you can understand. A collaboration filled with kindness with a special end result. Perfect. And we'd like to say another quick thank you to everyone at home for helping us raise so much money this year. As you just saw, your collaboration truly goes a long way for the kids here on Delmarva. It's a really good job, Jen. Nice story. Thanks, Charlie. And the next story is your story, and it's so cute. It is cute. Uh, this story is about believing. Specifically, uh, how do you expect to see someone that you don't believe exists? Well, this takes us to a place where people do believe and folks actually do show up.
I noticed all the children are running around. Why is that? Because Santa's not here yet. Did you hear that Santa Claus was actually coming here tonight? You heard that? Do you think that's going to happen? What are you going to ask him for? And you think he'll really come? Here. Oh, is that right? Are you excited about Santa Claus coming? Personally? I know two times. You've already seen him two times? Yes. At the firehouse. The firehouse, you know that? You've been a good girl this year? Yes, Tom. Yes. Have you been good? Yes. No. No. Wait. In the middle. No, I, I was half an hour. Which half is which? <laughs> the good half. And everybody's going to walk orderly outside. You still think he's coming? You do? You don't think he forgot or anything? He's really coming. You knew he was really coming, didn't you? So you weren't surprised at all. So Jen, this is our first Christmas together, and you got to see something they do up in Georgetown, Delaware that's pretty unique. Why don't you tell us about that? Correct. So that was Caroling on the Circle in Georgetown, and it was super cool. It was an opportunity to see people singing in Spanish and also singing Christmas carols in English. So it was something that I haven't seen before, and it was just great. Very, very cool. Wonderful. So what you're talking about here is um, peace on Earth. What would peace on Earth look like if we actually saw it? Well, maybe this story would give you some idea. For four and thirty years, the good people of Georgetown, Delaware, have gathered at the circle in the center of town to celebrate Christmas together and to bring tidings of comfort and joy to others. Although it was started by adults, it has long since become a children's crusade. It's uh, really important for the kids to see it. We were just the facilitators. The kids put this all into action. Um, they, you know, they did a great job. You know, get, making sure all our first grade teachers had boxes and getting everything set up and promoting it. So it was really, it was really all the students. Yeah. And in our search for ways to be truly one nation under God be wise to pay heed to Christmas on the Circle in Georgetown, Delaware. You can still help pack the pods, canned goods, and non-perishable items will be accepted at the two county offices in Georgetown until December the 29th. Coming up, a look at how people across Del Marva are celebrating Christmas both today and in the years past. That's next on Del Marvelous Christmas at WVOC. First, here's a little fun Christmas fact for you. The world's largest Christmas stocking was in London in 2007. It was roughly 106 feet long and almost 50 feet wide. It weighed almost as much as five reindeer and held almost 1,000 presents. It's Del Marva's Holiday House. These beautiful trees were decorated with love and care by Laura Dorman of Berlin. She's a retired florist who decorates at least 10 trees each year. Absolutely beautiful, Laura. Del Marva is composed of people who come from all over the world. And this time of the year, you can see that diversity as folks celebrate the season in their own traditional ways. There are countless ways we celebrate this season on Delmarva. 
Churches spring to life with special programs. Or folks gather in a school auditorium. Meanwhile, a bunch of guys make hundreds of pies to keep the Rock-a-Walking Community Hall going. And in Dorchester County, elegant handmade wreaths are auctioned off to support the Pleasant Day Medical Daycare, a great place. Nephew, you keep Christmas and still, way. for others, Dickens is the spirit of Christmas. There's a difference between a stage show and a children's program between a pie bake and a wreath raffle. But there's something all these things have in common. These are the things we do together, no matter who we are or where we gather. Now that's just a small sample of the Christmas celebrations going on in Delmarva. If you see something in the paper, or on the radio, or on TV, go and check it out. Merry Christmas! A Christmas greeting from our house to your house. Coming up, a little inside look into Christmas here at WVOC. But first, another fun fact. Did you know the first person to decorate a Christmas tree is reportedly the Protestant reformer Martin Luther? According to legend, he was so moved by the beauty of the stars shining through the branches of a fir tree, he brought home an evergreen and decorated it with candles to share the image with his children. Here's jolly old St. Nick himself, decorated by Winter Truitt and Debbie Windsor of Willards, Maryland. We have such a big family here at WBOC, and Jen, now you're a part of it. That's right, Charlie. I'm so happy to be here. I'm a part of this family, but all of you guys watching at home are part of our family, too. So we send you this Christmas greeting from our house to yours. There seems to be but one way to begin this Christmas greeting, coming as it does from our house to yours, which is, of course, what we do every day and have done for decades here at WBOC. And each year, it seems only fitting to send greetings from members of our family Merry that, Christmas. that you don't see on the air, which is the overwhelming majority of the staff. We've done this for so long now that we pause and try to remember this name or that and, for extra points, recall where they are now. But there are a few whose whereabouts are all too well known, for they now reside in our hearts and in our memories. Foremost among them this Christmas is our friend and our leader, a remarkable man who touched countless lives, Mr. Tom Draper whose unexpected departure left this company in shock, but in a way somehow suited the unpredictable nature of a remarkable man. company really by the people you have. And we got there was some predictability to Tom Draper, especially when it came to Christmas. <laughs> For no one had more Christmas spirit than old Father Christmas himself. It suited him so well, I think, for his was a kind and generous nature, and Tom found his greatest pleasure in all the years I knew him in making other people's lives better. And that nature guided this company to where it is today, always focused on you, our friends and family, scattered up and down this blessed peninsula, as we all pause this one day to remember the past and celebrate the present and hope for the future. What a great tribute. Thank you, dear. It was uh, very meaningful to all of us here. So grab some eggnog and settle in. This special isn't over yet. Up next, we have a really special treat. Coming up, we'll have a Christmas performance by some of our friends here at WBOC, some very special people. We'll see you then. But first, another Christmas fact. Did you know Tiny Tim and Charles Dickens' classic A Christmas Carol was almost named Little Fred?
Frosty the Snowman was a jolly happy soul. Here's some snowmen, true Delmarva style, getting ready to head to the beach. Thanks to Marty and Anna Cowan for sending us this one. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of folks that work here that you never get to meet. I'd like to introduce you to two of them. There's my friend Megan Shuey, who's a producer here who produced this show, and my good friend Pete Evans, who's been here for about 20 years, an editor, a photographer, and a fine musician. So we're going to do a Christmas song for you, uh, one you'll probably recognize, and I guess we should start. sent us photos of your holiday decorations this past month. Coming up, we'll give you a bird's eye view from Chopper 16, helping to spread Christmas cheer one home at a time. The Herring's household is decking the halls, such a wonderful display of lights in Del Mar, Delaware, and now for a bird's eye view of a Delmarva's holiday spirit, here's a look from Chopper 16. So 
tender and mild, sleep in heavenly We want to thank you for allowing us to spend this time with you on Christmas night. And Jen, thank you so much for joining us. It's made it a lot easier for me. Of course, I'm happy to be here. And the holidays are a time to be with friends and family. So from all of us here at WBOC, Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Bye. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas, everybody. Feliz Navidad. Prospero año y felicidad. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero año y felicidad.